And then you have the number formats, which is a special type of format that you can apply to a cell or range of cells that contain numbers. And I'm looking at these numbers right here that represent the cells for each employee for the months of January through April. And I want to be able to add a special number format that adds the dollar symbol next to each one of these numbers. To do that, after I selected my range, I want to come up here on the Home tab, go to the Number group, and hey, there's a dollar symbol. You can see when I hover over it, that's the accounting number format. And in the pop-up, it's not just, well, for dollars, which is the default for my Excel program, but you can also do it for euros or other currency. When I click on it, the default's added with the dollar symbols, but if I want to go ahead and change that to a different type of currency, click on its corresponding drop-down arrow, and you get it for the UK, Euro, you can do more. Let me go ahead and click off. So that's for the accounting, and you can see it with it selected down below, what type of number format's being applied to it in this window here, which you do have a drop-down arrow, so if you want to change it, click on the drop-down arrow and you get all these different options, and the least of which we got accounting. But in addition to that, you also have currency, and that also has a dollar symbol. So what's the difference between the two? Well, you're not going to see it in my database unless I arrange it just a little bit because the width of my columns are too small. So if I come up here and I hover to the right of the column header C, but before D, until I can see arrows pointing in opposite directions in between the two, when I go ahead and click and drag to the right, it opens up the width of column C. And when I let go, you can see the dollar symbol is way out there in left field, as opposed to, well, let's come back up here and change it from accounting to, click on it, currency, where it gets snug right up against the number. So there's the major difference. And then let's come back up here and you got your percent symbol. You also have the thousandth separator. So when you get four numbers or more, it can separate the first of the number away from the rest. So that's the thousand. And then you also have the increase and decrease decimal places. So down below, I have two decimal places. If I decrease it, the second decimal place, if it's five or greater than, it'll automatically round up the first decimal place, which goes from 0.2 in this case to 0.3. You want to see it? Yeah, all right, let's come up here and go ahead and there you go on the pop-up, decrease it. So get rid of a decimal place and it goes from 0.25 to 0.3. Now if you're like, okay, I wanna go ahead and revert this back to the way it was, remember, as we went over in an earlier training video, you can come up here on the Home tab, go to the Editing group, click on the eraser and choose Clear Formats and we're back to where we started. And you can see up here in the Number group, now it's a general number, not the accounting number format or the currency that we selected thereafter. Now there are other number formats besides what you see in the group here, and you can click on the drop down arrow, see more, but you can go ahead and go down to more numbers, opens up the format cells window here, and we're on the number tab, so we can see all the different types of number formats that we can choose from, the number, the currency, ooh, let's go to currency, but before I do that, let me close out before I lose this thought, because you don't have to go that route to get there, you can also save yourself a click and click on its expandable dialog box button for the number group, click on it, opens up the same window, or close out, you can right click on the selection and go down to format cells, opens up the same window. And so for the number format, we can go to currency and we can change the decimal place and you can see a preview of it. If we go up to three, adds a zero because I didn't have anything prior, but just two decimal places. So I'm just adding a bunch of zeros. So let's go back down to two. Then the symbol, click on the drop down arrow. We can do the Russian, ruble, if I'm saying that right, let me click off. And then for your negative numbers, when you type in a minus sign, it'll keep it there before the dollar. Or when you type in a minus sign and you choose that format, it's going to be in red, or you can have parentheses, or a combination of both, red and parentheses. Let's go ahead and do that. Click OK. And then when I type in negative whatever, one, hit enter. There you go. That represents a negative number. And now he owes me a dollar for him not selling. Now, how about a date? Well, I don't mean you, silly. I'm looking at the date format applied to that number there, and we'll go over that in greater detail in a later training video. But right now, to keep it simple, you can see with it selected up here in the number group on the home tab, it's a date. Click on the drop down arrow, and let's see what other options we get. Well, we have a short date for those dates that you wish were short, and then you have a long date, which includes the day and the month. Ooh, that looks fun. Let's go ahead and click on that and it doesn't display it. Why? Because as you recall in an earlier training video, when Excel can't display everything that fills up the content of that cell because the, well in this case, the width of the column is too small, it puts in a number mask. 
So that way you're not fooled into, because you only see part of a number, that that's what it is. And that can really mess up your accounting, couldn't it? Well, in this case, it's a date. But still, it follows the same format. So to go ahead and be able to see it, you can do one of two things. Either hover over it, and in the pop-up, it displays it in full. Or you can hover in between the two column headers to the right of the column that we want to expand. You can click and drag, or double-click really fast to do an auto-fit, and there we go. And of course, if you want more number formats for this, you can right click on it, go down to Format Cells. Let me click and drag this over so we can see it. And it's on the date category. And you can see what's currently applied to it up in the sample. And you can go ahead and scroll down and choose another date, maybe just the month and the year. You can also choose a different location, English to something that gets kind of kooky and out of my country. In any case, leave that up to you. And then when you're done, go ahead and click OK, and it updates it. May of 2019. Now, even though it shows it there, the format, if you want the full date, just come up here in the formula bar, and you can see the original data entry format, 5 slash 15 slash 2019. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please look in the description below this video.